Hi friends and drama nerds, today's drama is about a movie titled, Polaroid. When a high school student finds a Polaroid camera, she discovers that there are dark secrets tied to it. Soon, she realizes that people who take photo with it are disappearing. What would you do if you found a photo of yourself taken with this camera? We start the story with two friends, Sarah and Linda, who are going through a box of Sarah's late mother's belongings. There they find a Polaroid camera and a photograph of her mother, probably taken with that same camera. Sarah decides to use this camera to take a photo of herself in lingerie for her boyfriend. However, when the flash goes off, she feels somewhat uncomfortable. While they are leaving the photo to be developed, Linda receives a call, so she leaves there. Alone, Sarah goes to close the front door when she hears noises upstairs, as if someone was using the camera. Heading into the room, she discovers that the photo had been developed, but to her horror, she notices a dark figure in the background. Her fear intensifies when the lights begin to flicker and she hears more noise from the other room. As Sarah anxiously walks down the hallway, a ball bounces from the attic. Despite feeling terrified, she goes up to see what was happening, but the attic ladder falls to the ground, leaving her no safe way down. Sarah, very confused, checks the area, but is suddenly startled by a hand, causing her to fall and hanging by the leg in the air. After telling her something, she takes Sarah and takes her life before dumping her corpse. In the next scene we are introduced to a shy girl named Bird, who is preparing for picture day at school. She always wore a scarf to hide a scar she had on her neck. After school, Bird leaves the facility when she sees her crush, Connor, with her friends. She takes out her camera to take a photo of her, but he sees her. Nervous, she quickly picks up her things and leaves the place to her work, an antique store. There, her co-worker, Tyler, approaches her and surprises her with a gift. This was a rare Polaroid camera from about 70 years ago that he had found at a garage sale and had the letters RJS engraved on it. Eager to try it out, Bird takes a photo of Tyler, and while they wait for the photo to reveal itself, Tyler leans in for a kiss, but Bird feels uncomfortable and walks away from him, leaving the camera case behind. Upon arriving home, Bird tries to take some photos photos, some pictures of her dog with her new camera, but she strangely growls and backs away. Just before she can take the photo, her best friend, Cassie, appears. She asks Bird to accompany her to a costume party, suggesting that it is a great opportunity to socialize with friends and possibly see Connor. Bird, who initially doubts it, accepts when she hears the name of the person she likes. After this, they are picked up by their friends Mina and Devin, a couple in a slightly fun love-hate relationship. As they chat in the car, Bird pulls out the photo of Tyler she took earlier and noticed is a dark wonder in the background. She tries to clean it, thinking it is a stain, but it won't go away. Despite this, she doesn't pay much attention to it and puts the photo away. Elsewhere, Tyler is preparing to close the store. When he sees a bunch of old photographs in a box, he places them on the projector and they begin to move forward. During this, he notices a figure moving from one photo to another, suspecting that there is someone behind the curtain. He approaches with a hammer and knocks, but there is nothing. When she proceeds to check the projector, the curtain rises, forming a figure. The figure runs at Tyler and apparently ending his life. We return to the party with Bird. The friends are greeted by Avery, the hostess. Bird already seems a little uncomfortable, so she stays alone in the corner. Shortly after, she notices a guy in a skeleton mask staring at her. She tries to evade him, but the man walks right in front of her, and we realize that it is actually Connor, and it is a great relief for Bird and they both start talking. Shortly after, they are interrupted by Mina and Devon, who invite Connor to join them for a group photo. Bird then offers to take the photo of them with her Polaroid camera. Ali Cassio appears out of nowhere and Bird takes the photo. Just then, Avery arrives and takes Bird's camera to take a selfie. But before the photos are released, the police show up at the party looking for Bird. Next, we see that the girl is at the police station, where the sheriff, Pembroke, reveals the devastating news of Tyler's death. He tells her that he would contact them if he found any clues to what had happened. While they talk, the sheriff recognizes his last name and remembers the accident that the little girl had survived during her childhood. This was the origin of the scar she had on her neck. That night, Bird reviews the photographs she took with her Polaroid camera. To her surprise, she realizes that the mysterious shadow had disappeared from Tyler's photo and had now appeared in Avery's. She attempts to contact her, but doesn't know what to say, then she sleeps. Avery is cleaning her house after the party when she hears footsteps. She cautiously heads upstairs to investigate, only to find a creepy figure stalking her in the dark. Terrified, she runs to the front door, but 
accidentally hits her head on a lamp, causing her to fall. Despite this, she attempts to crawl away from it, but the ghostly entity catches up with her and fatally grabs her by the neck. The next morning, Bird receives a call from Cassie informing her of Avery's death. Shocked by the news, to review the photos, only to discover that the shadow had now disappeared from Avery's photo and moved into the group photo. Bird then tries to destroy the camera, but it emits an energy wave that knocks her down. Later at school, Bird sits with Mina, Devon, Cassie, and Connor, all dealing with the recent tragedy. During this, she shares her theory that Avery's death was not an accident, explaining how the shadow passed from a photo after each death. She warns them that anyone who was photographed with this Polaroid camera would die. Unfortunately, no one takes her words seriously and Devon even burns the group photo. Surprisingly, this causes Mina's hand to burn in real life and Cassie also feels pain in her fingers. And nothing can help with putting out the fire, then Bird realizes that should stop the photo from burning. Just then it stops, and the charred photograph then restores itself. Mina is later taken to the hospital to undergo surgery on her arm. While the friends wait outside, they discuss the origin of the camera. Bird remembers that the camera case was still in the antique store, so she and Connor go to look for it. But when they get to the store, Bird chooses to go in alone and says that she is safe because she didn't appear in the photo. While waiting for the car, Connor examines the group photo and suddenly hears the camera going off. Inside, Bird retrieves the case, but the ghostly creature appears. Horrified, she runs towards the exit, but her scarf gets caught on a nail. It looks like she's going to die too, but Connor arrives just in time to save her. Later, on the way back, Bird wonders why the entity was after her, to which Connor reveals that she had also appeared in the photo. It turns out that her reflection could be faintly seen in the background of the photograph. At the hospital, Mina wakes up from surgery to find Devon at her bedside. After a brief chat, her boyfriend leaves to call the nurse. At the same time, Mina receives a call from Bird, telling her not to be alone. Panicking, she tries to get out of bed, but the entity suddenly attacks her. When Devon returns, he finds the room empty with a small trail, and the entity detaches itself from the bed. Devon gets off the bed, and finds a trail of blood on the floor. He follows the trail, and comes across Mina's lifeless body hanging. When Bird and Connor arrive at the hospital, Benedette comes talking to a police officer. Once everyone leaves, he approaches Bird, and angrily blames her for causing all of this. He yells at her so loudly that Bird ends up leaving the place. Connor then follows her, and the two sit in a hallway to talk. While they talk, Bird tells him about his father, who was a reporter. One night, he wanted to show her one of her projects, but she had refused because she wanted to go to a sleepover at her friend's house. This prompted her father to turn the car around to return home, but unfortunately, he had a fatal accident. Hearing this, Connor offers her comfort and assures her that the accident was not her fault. The two then check the contents of the camera case and find a locker tag hidden inside. Intrigued, they visit the library to research the meaning of the data. After reviewing several old items, they discover that the camera was owned by a photography teacher, Ronald Joseph Sable, from his school. He was accused of torturing four students and killing three of them while he took maniacal photographs. One of the captives had managed to escape after the police shot Ronald. Later that night, the friends meet at a restaurant to discuss their next move. In the middle of this, Bird tells them that when the entity was coming after her, she approached something hot and reacted. She then explains that while photographs are being developed, heat and light can ruin the image. Therefore, she speculated that this thing might behave like a developing photograph, meaning, it can only exist in the dark. Furthermore, she also reveals that the photograph was a developed photograph. She also revealed a picture of Ronald's old house, suggesting that someone related to him may still live there and possess a little more information. They surf the internet and finds out that the house was bought by a person named Annie Faraday. In the middle of the argument, Devon was frustrated by Mina's fate and decides to take a photo with the camera to understand how it works. But Connor doesn't like the idea, which leads to a small struggle and he accidentally takes a photo of it. So the group waits anxiously for the image to be revealed. Shortly after, Devon is seen in the photo and the shadows move. Transfers to him, indicating that he is the next victim. Fearing for his life, Devon tries to use the camera on Connor, but in a desperate attempt to stop him, Casey stabs Devon's photo with a pencil, and in the real-time effect causes the camera to fall off from his hand and makes a hole in his palm. This angers Devon and he tries to attack his friends, but Sheriff Pembroke appears at the right time and arrests him. Later, Bird and Connor try to explain to the sheriff the danger Devon is in, because of the camera. Bird also presents evidence about Ronald, but the unflappable officer warns them again that they are in trouble. Before leaving, Bird talks to Devon while being taken to the jail, who apologizes for his actions. He also suggests that his death might buy them a little time to stop the entity. Bird receives a call from Casey who informs them that Annie was not the buyer of the house. She was Lena Sable, the psycho teacher, Ronald's wife, who is now using a fake name.
time. Despite Pembroke's warning, Bird and Connor decide to visit this woman to find out the truth. Back at the police station, the lights go out and the ghostly entity attacks Devon in his cell, causing him to faint. Meanwhile, Connor and Bert arrive at Lena's residence, who at first refuses to talk to them, but when she mentions the camera, she reveals that it actually belonged to her daughter, Rebecca James Sable, who matches the initials RJS characters. Lena then takes them to her room and shares her story with them. Rebecca was a victim of bullying at school and often retreated into her own world. The camera that they gave her as a gift became her comfort and accompanied her everywhere. However, one day, her four friends tricked her into going with them. They took inappropriate photos of her on her camera, which circulated throughout the school for humiliating her. Overcome with shame, Rebecca took her own life. After that tragedy, Ronald discovered the photos and swore to avenge his daughter. He captured the bullies in a dark room at the school and took photographs of them before starting to kill them. Shortly after, the police intervened and Ronald was killed. Grabbing the camera, Lena reveals that one of the four children had managed to escape, and she shows them a photo. As she finishes her story, the lights in the room begin to flicker. That causes Kennard to review the photographs and see that the shadow had returned into the group photo. Sensing imminent danger, they leave the scene and run to the school, also calling for Casey. Upon arriving, they look for old school documents and finally manage to match the photo that the woman had given them. To her surprise, the survivor is none other than Sheriff Pembroke. At this moment, the sheriff appears with Casey in handcuffs, accusing them of infiltrating the school. In an attempt to prevent the entity from killing them, Connor okay a photograph of Pembroke before the latter threw the camera to the ground. After this, Pembroke reveals that Lena's story is a fabrication, that the inappropriate photos were actually taken by Ronald himself, her own father. Stating that Ronald was physically assaulting his daughter Rebecca, so he and his three friends intended to help her by showing her those photos to the police. However, Ronald found out about his plan and kidnapped him. As Pembroke finishes his explanation, the entity appears behind him. The sheriff opens fire, but the bullets do not affect him. The entity rips Pembroke's photo in half, and in real life, the same happens to the sheriff. The entity then attacks Casey and injures her leg. At that moment, Connor grabs the sheriff's gun and fires at the entity to disable it or to divert his attention. The girls run to seek refuge in the bathroom, where they turn on the hot water to protect themselves. After a while, Bird leaves Casey to look for Connor, who soon grabs her arm and leads her to a room. Bird then comes up with an idea that involves retrieving the camera and going somewhere where Ronald can fully develop. As soon as he gets the camera, the entity takes Connor away. To save him, Bird rushes to take a selfie with the camera, drawing her attention to herself. She then takes the entity to a dark room in the basement. Shortly after, the entity grabs her by the neck and begins to strangle her. In that quick action, Bird uses the camera to take a photo of the entity, inadvertently including its fingers. Despite this, she crumples the photo causing both the creature and her hand to disintegrate. Since this had not finished him yet, she sets the image on fire, finally ending the entity once and for all. In the final scene, we see Bird throwing the camera into the ocean, ensuring that the cycle of this madness is never repeat again. Thanks for watching the video. Give us a like or subscribe for more story like this.